In this video, I will answer all the most important questions about protein in your kidneys. What happens to your kidneys if you completely stop eating protein? Also, what are the best protein sources for kidney health, and where can you find keto analogs? How to use protein to protect kidney health? The reason I made this video is that many of you have been seeing great success in improving your protein levels, creatinine, and kidney function by switching to a low-protein, plant-based diet. Reducing meat, fish, and dairy products protects your kidneys. You're probably wondering where to get protein without reaching for a piece of beef. Because, let's be honest, you need protein. So, what are the best protein sources for you? Clearly, we can't completely avoid protein, it's an essential nutrient. So where can we get the necessary protein for kidney health? Spoiler alert, protein is everywhere. First, let's clarify one thing, almost every food contains protein, except for fruits. You think you're avoiding it? Not really. A small slice of bread contains 2.7 grams of protein. And maybe you add a side of broccoli? More protein. That small serving of broccoli adds another 4.2 grams of protein. So, you thought you were just having a small, carb-heavy meal, but instead, you just got 7 grams of protein. The average CKD, chronic kidney disease, patient only needs about 30 to 50 grams of protein per day. With just bread and broccoli, you've already hit 7 grams. What are the best protein sources? The answer is that all plant-based foods also contain other essential nutrients, vitamins, fiber, and all those healthy elements, while keeping protein levels as low as possible. Because, as we've seen, it's actually quite difficult to eat too little protein as long as you're eating anything at all. People always eat too much protein, never too little. Now, what about specific foods? If you want to know about some high-protein foods, remember that not all proteins are created equal. For example, the protein you get from most grains, seeds, and vegetables is not complete protein, it lacks some essential amino acids. That doesn't mean your body can't use it. Think of it like assembling IKEA furniture, you just need all the pieces. Add a few seeds, some nuts, and you've got a complete protein, no instructions needed. So basically, if your diet is well planned, you won't have any issues. And of course, if you eat meat, fish, or dairy products, those are complete proteins. But those foods also come with unhealthy amounts of phosphorus, which is the number one enemy of your kidneys, well, maybe number two after protein. There are certain protein sources that are low in phosphorus while still providing high quality, complete protein. Egg whites are one example, there's no phosphorus in them, just high quality protein. That's why they are great for dialysis patients who need to keep phosphorus intake as low as possible. Egg whites are your best friends. Another group of foods that contain high-quality protein without phosphorus is soy-based foods. You know, edamame, tofu, tempeh, these are all rich in protein. For example, tofu has around 10 to 15 grams of protein per half cup, making it great for dialysis patients. It can also be included in the diet of CKD, chronic kidney disease, patients who are not on dialysis as long as the portion is small enough. Soy also helps reduce proteinuria, so not only are soy foods high in protein, but they also work to help relax your kidneys. Another thing worth mentioning is whole grains. Now, you can plan a kidney-friendly diet without soy foods, but you can't plan any long-term diet without whole grains, which are crucial because some whole grains are also complete protein sources. Quinoa and amaranth are perfect examples. These whole grains are packed with vitamins, 
fiber, magnesium, iron, and many other essential nutrients, making them an ideal addition to your diet. Another food worth mentioning is chia seeds. These seeds are not only rich in complete protein but also contain omega-3, a nutrient that is hard to get in a plant-based diet. Also worth mentioning is spirulina. Now, spirulina is very high in protein, so be careful with it. It contains about 4 grams of complete protein per tablespoon and is also rich in iron and a variety of essential vitamins. That's why spirulina is often considered a superfood. So, in summary, all these amazing protein sources are here to make sure you don't need a steak to save your kidneys. What happens to your kidneys if you completely stop eating high-protein foods? Imagine that starting tomorrow, you completely give up beef, hamburgers, bacon, cheese, fish, and all other high-protein foods, forever. What will happen to your kidneys? A patient on a low-protein diet, if they adhere to it, often experiences improvements in their glomerular filtration rate, GFR, or at least stabilization. This occurs in most cases, as long as the patient doesn't have underlying conditions that continue to cause harm. To explain what happens inside your kidneys when you stop eating all that protein, think of your kidneys as if they were muscles in your legs. They need rest. And that's how a low-protein diet works. But can you still eat a little meat, say, once or twice a week? Let's assume you've given your kidneys a chance to recover. You're following a plant-based diet filled with healthy foods, limiting sodium because that's also not great for your kidneys, avoiding ultra-processed foods, and drinking enough water every day. Would it really be so bad to add a little meat or fish occasionally? When will your kidneys be strong enough to function properly? Unfortunately, there's a key difference between your muscles and your kidneys. You can't give your kidneys a break. They are always working, filtering day and night, managing your blood pressure every moment. They are like overworked laborers constantly pushing through just to keep going. They're not exactly happy about it, but they keep working hard. That's why I strongly discourage adding unnecessary stress to them. So, Love your kidneys now, and they will support you for many years to come. What about diabetic patients? Should they limit protein? This is an important question. If someone has diabetes, is protein still good for them? Yes, of course. Lean meats, fatty fish, and eggs are great for people with diabetes, unless they have kidney disease. Are you saying that the kidneys of diabetics are just like anyone else's? They're often in worse condition. In fact, diabetic CKD patients are generally at a higher risk of proteinuria compared to non-diabetic CKD patients. But remember, this has to do with how high blood glucose levels damage the glomeruli. In any case, Diabetics are often advised to limit carbs and increase protein intake, and that's good advice, if they don't have kidney disease. But as soon as their GFR drops below normal, protein should also be restricted. As long as you limit sugar and ultra-processed carbs, a low-protein diet is completely safe for diabetics. No, that apple and kale smoothie won't spike your glucose. Just make sure you're avoiding beef, according to science. Why do some doctors still recommend cheese and meat? So, a patient starts a kidney diet. They go to their doctor for a meal plan, or maybe they even get referred to a renal dietitian for guidance. But instead of that, their doctor tells them to keep eating meat, especially cheese. Some doctors really love cheese. They tell you to avoid sodium, yet they encourage you to eat cheese? Does that make sense to you? That's because your doctor's goal is to manage CKD, not to help you improve. Remember what your doctor said about CKD? That you can't get better? 
So, what they're really aiming for is keeping your lab values stable, making them more predictable. They're not aiming for, wow, I feel like a new person, but rather, hey, I'm still here, just slowly declining at a steady rate. Predictable lab values are their bread and butter. Now, predictable lab values are always a good thing, don't get me wrong. If you suddenly change your diet, your values will fluctuate, and unexpected things can happen. So go ahead, keep eating ribeye with a side of Kraft cheese, and start thinking about which dialysis clinic you prefer, because that's the standard predicted outcome for someone with CKD. But hey, at least you saved your doctor a headache. Why do kidney patients have low albumin? This question is probably from someone who eats meat or something like that. You can't live without protein, and the proof is that kidney patients always have low albumin. We get albumin from meat, kidney patients don't eat meat, and they have low albumin. Gotcha, renal nutrition expert. First, not all CKD patients have low albumin. In reality, for some patients, low blood albumin can be a sign of malnutrition or too little protein in their diet. But do you know what the most common cause of low blood albumin in CKD patients is? No, it's not cutting out meat, it's proteinuria, also known as protein in the urine. In fact, you'll find two albumin values on your lab report. One is serum albumin, or albumin in the blood, and the other is urinary albumin, or proteinuria. Now, albumin is a type of protein, and it should be in your blood. So having too little serum albumin is bad, and it should never be in your urine. But for patients with high proteinuria values, this is easier said than done. So, should we prescribe a ribeye steak with a side of bacon for patients with proteinuria? No, of course not. In fact, cutting back on dietary protein is the best treatment for proteinuria, according to science. And this proves that what this commenter said is not the gotcha they think it is. Remember, if you want less protein in your urine and more protein in your blood, where it should be, you need to follow a renal diet. A low-protein diet supplemented with keto analogs appears to be effective in safely delaying kidney replacement therapy or dialysis by reducing proteinuria and slowing kidney function decline and advanced diabetic kidney disease. So, this is a very recent study conducted to confirm what we've known for years, that the dietary needs of people with diabetes are similar to those without diabetes, except they have more proteinuria. But they also highlighted an interesting point, the use of keto analogs. What are keto analogs, and should you take them? Keto analogs are a special type of amino acid that patients should be prescribed when following a low-protein diet. Now, not everyone takes them, and for most patients, this is not an issue. In fact, most patients eat more protein than necessary, and in that case, these supplements don't really help. On the other hand, those following a very strict renal diet with protein restrictions will truly benefit from keto analogs. Supplementing these special amino acids while on a low-protein diet is a way to significantly delay dialysis in advanced CKD patients, as we can see from the study. They get all the essential amino acids they need from protein, without any of the problems that come with consuming regular dietary protein. There are a few brands that sell these amino acids, including Fresenius and Albutrix, and previously Corina. These are prescription supplements, right? But I've shown patients before that, yes, you could also buy Arena online because this supplement didn't require a prescription, and everyone was happy. Now, unfortunately, that product is no longer available. So, how do you get keto analogs in 2024? Well, you still need a prescription to get keto analogs, right? So, talk to your doctor and ask for a prescription, 
maybe for keto sterile from Fresenius, which is the most widely used keto analog worldwide. But you see, it's good to have options, and Corina used to be the cheapest among them. Nowadays, as far as I know, the only keto analog you can buy online is Albutrix, which is still better than nothing. By the way, if any of you know of other brands selling keto analogs online, let me know in the comments. But as I said, these are prescription products, and your doctor should determine the right brand and dosage for you. And that's all for today. Thanks for watching. God bless you. Goodbye.